Franklin Park Zoo in Boston today and it's winter and it's cold, but we're gonna go see what's here, so come on. Let's do gorilla pose. Hands out and swing your arms. <laughs> You walk like an emu? Being at the zoo reminds me that there are many animals around the world in danger of becoming extinct. Extinct means that if they go away, they can never come back. There are lots of reasons why the animals are in danger, but most of them are caused by people. There is loss of natural resources like water and forest and land. Humans also spray chemicals, and then there's pollution. Look who's here. That's a Grevy zebra. And the Grevy zebra is on the endangered species list. It's natural habitats in Africa. And that gives me an idea about where we can go today. And while we're traveling, maybe we can think about how each one of us can make a difference every single day in our world. I'm here with a couple of friends today. This is... Isabella, Ava. So Isabella, Ava, and I, we're all going to have an adventure today. So come along with us. Hi, girls. How are you? Good. Good. We're going to start today with just taking some quiet breaths. So just three regular breaths. Do you guys remember why we sit up tall? Because it's good for our back. It is. It's yeah. good for your spine. It's good for your back. What does it do for your breath? It expands your lungs, like, so you can breathe better. So, yeah, it gives you more space. So if you're hunched over like this, give it a try. Take a breath. <sighs> it's not that easy, yeah, right? But sit up tall and now do it. <sighs> right? You get more air. So what happens when you get more air and breath into your body? It is healthier, and it, what can it do for you? It can calm you, right? It can help you focus. So if you're really nervous, and you take a couple of breaths, suddenly everything kind of comes back together, right? So let's do three breaths with our hands going up over our head. We're gonna breathe in through our nose and out through our mouth. Here we go, breathe in and out. Breathe in. Out. One more. Breathe in. And out. All right. So we're going to go somewhere today in Magic Mat. And the hint is there's lots of animals there. Ooh. So where do you think that is? Maybe Africa? Yes. We're going to go to Africa. Great. And there's a special reason why we're going there. We're going to go there and see some endangered species. So now, let's stand up. We're going to warm up. So we're going to get our engines going. We're going to get our planes going. We're going to get up into the clouds. One knee's bent. Your back leg is straight. And your arms are going to come out. That's great. And you can look over your front fingers. And then you start breathing. And while you're breathing, what we're going to do with our breath while we go to Africa is every time we breathe in, we're going to try to think of gratitude about that these animals that we're going to go see still exist. So we're going to breathe in gratitude like this. And when we breathe out, we're going to breathe intention for their survival. Do you know what intention is? Let's switch sides. Bring your hands up. Let's switch to the other side. What's intention? Do you know? No. <laughs> Not really? Mm -hmm. So intention means when you want something to happen. So when you get up in the morning, everyone has the intention of getting to school on time, hopefully, right? That's an intention. Even though you're not maybe thinking the whole time, I've got to get to school, I've got to get to school, it's your intention, right? It's your intention to have breakfast, maybe. It's your intention to be a good friend. You know, you have the thought or the idea to get something accomplished. Now, sometimes, come on back up, let's go straight up like this, breathe in and out. Sometimes you have the intention to do something you can't do. Right? Yeah. Maybe we can't save all the animals today, but we can have the intention that they survive. 
And maybe by us having that kind of positive thought, it will help. Are your arms getting tired? This is harder <laughs> than, right? This is harder than it looks, right? Yeah. Give them a shake. Take strength. So come on back up. And then bend forward. And come on down like this. So wide forward fold. Breathe in again. And breathe out. And breathe in. And breathe out. And then use your legs to help you come on up. Bring your legs together and we'll do airplane pose. And then we're gonna get on our planes and get to Africa and see our animals. Find some balance on one leg. So you can put your weight on the leg that's straight, the foot that's behind you, be up on your toe. And just find balance on the leg that's in front and then start to lift it slowly, slowly. Pull your belly in. <laughs> and see, sometimes it's hard for me to It's really, it's like an airplane. It is, right? That's why we sit in seats with seatbelts on airplanes. <laughs> right? Whoa. Okay, all right, let's shake, shake, shake. All right, hands up, breathe in. And come back down. Have a seat on your plane. Get your feet up like this. Put on your seatbelt. Scooch up because we're going to roll a little bit. And we're, while we roll, the plane's going to start up. And we're going to get some magic going and get to Africa. So roll back and forth. Use your core when you come up. Five, four, three, two, one. We're in Africa. Woo! Oh, we got here. You guys okay? You good? Okay. <laughs> Let's see what's first animal we're gonna see. So the first animal we're gonna see is the African penguin. So let's stand up, we'll do penguin pose. And we're gonna have your legs, feet wide and your feet, your legs are wide and your feet are pointed out like a penguin. And then you're gonna stand up really tall so your shoulders are back and down. And you've got your hands out like this, right? <laughs> Take a breath in, thinking of gratitude. And then when you breathe out, side bend. <laughs> Then come back up and breathe out. Let's do that one more each side. Breathe in, other side. And come on up, other side. And now we're just gonna rock like this. We don't have to walk, but we're gonna pretend. And so the next uh, animal is called Rothschild's giraffe. So it's a oh, species oh. of giraffe. Have you seen a giraffe anywhere? Ever? Yeah, they're very, what? Oh. Tall. <laughs> very tall. So we're going to raise our hands up like the giraffe's neck and then we're going to bring our hands forward like the head and then we're going to take a breath in and when you breathe out just come forward like you're eating the leaves of the tree on the way down. You can bend your knees and stay here for a breath and then come on back up breathing in all the way up and then eat those leaves again. Good job. Let's stay here for a breath, breathing in, breathing out, and then walk a little forward with your feet back. So we're going to call this flat leaf pose today. It's really a plank pose, isn't it? And it's, yeah. It's challenging. Yeah. Can you bring your back a little flatter so you're not up so far? It makes it harder. <laughs> you can also bring your knees down. Good job. This you is another type plank. Yes, that's forearm plank. You want to try that? So we call this forearm leaf pose. So again though, you have to have your body off the ground, nice and flat. Yeah, it's hard, pull your belly in. Use your belly, it's, this is really good for your belly. Nice job, okay, come down, good work. All right, the next one, come on your hands and knees, is the Ethiopian wolf. So take one of your legs behind you, toe can be on the floor for now, and then stay balanced, take your opposite hand and bring it forward. So the opposite hand of your foot, good job. <laughs> And then see if you can lift your foot up and balance. It's hard. Pull your core in. Pull your belly in. There you go. Good. All right, come down. <laughs> Sit back for a second. Take a breath in and out. I'm going to do it on the other side. Don't give up. <laughs> come back on your hands and knees. You OK? Yeah. OK. So take your other foot behind you, whichever one you didn't do. And you can leave your foot down, too. So if this is super challenging, one way to do it is lift your opposite arm and keep your foot on the floor and still pull your belly in, right? Still use those muscles. Breathe. Breathe in and out. And maybe you lift your foot, maybe you don't. It's not important. Building the muscles is important. 
breathing while you're doing it is important. And it is a balanced pose. Breathe in one more time. And out. Good job. All right, take a break. Come back on your heels. <laughs> oh, feels good. You can put your head down. Breathe in. Breathe out. And we're going to come back to hands and knees. And this animal is called Grevy's zebra. So it's a, oh. it's a breed of zebra, which I love zebras. Zebras are super <laughs> cool. Um, I think they're pretty awesome. So um, we're going to just have your back. So remember, this is zebra, which is sometimes called cow pose. But today <laughs> it's zebra pose. And you drop your belly, your shoulders are back. You look forward, you take a breath. And instead of rounding your back, just come back up to a flat back, like a table. So not like this, just nice and flat. Let's try it again. So breathe in, drop your belly, look forward, your shoulders go back. And then breathe out, just come to a flat back, pull your belly in. And one more time, drop your belly, look forward, breathe in. And flat back. All right, so the next one we're gonna do. Can you tap your top of your feet, by the way? Let's do that. Does that feel, does it feel good? Yeah, it feels weird. Really, it feels weird. It's a nice thing of your feet, it's like giving them a little massage before yeah. we keep trekking through Africa. All right, stop. And then we're gonna do wild African dog. So ah. we know what that is, right? Yes. Downward facing dog. So come on to downward facing dog. Breathe in. And out. Now, how do you think you can make this into a wild dog? <laughs> I think I'll just try to lift my foot up. Some people like to do something called flipping their dog. So you bring your foot behind you, and you can come up like this if you want. Wow. <laughs> but you don't have to. You can do that if you want. And then try the other side. Whatever you did, you can try the other side or not. And maybe you bring your foot behind you, and you come up like that. <laughs> That's kind of wild. <laughs> Great. All right, come down your hands and knees. Take a deep breath. Arms forward, breathe in. Breathe out. All right, let's do this. Come back to wild African dog and take one of your feet underneath you and bring your foot forward and then bring the other one so you're in a low fold and then you press into your feet and stand up breathe in and breathe out Whew, shake a minute we're working hard in africa huh? <laughs> okay mountain gorilla is our ah. next one now gorillas are huge they can weigh up to 500 pounds Let's shake out, let's do mountain gorilla. So break your feet really wide. Point your toes out a little bit. Put your hands on your, on your thighs. Take a breath. When you breathe out, bring your arms up. And now stand up tall, breathe in. Super gorilla. <laughs> Good job, breathe in. Breathe out, super, super gorilla. <laughs> One more time, breathe in. Super gorilla. Now we're gonna hold here for a second. Yeah, do you feel it in your legs? Where do you feel it? Like right here, right here. Yeah, so breathe, right? Breathe in. <laughs> breathe out. See if you can hold it for one more breath. It's hard, it's hard for me too. Oh, good, stand up, nice. Shake, shake, shake. All right, we're gonna come down one more time. This is gonna feel good though. And then bring your hands like a gorilla arms and swing them. That feels kind of good, right? Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. So, so press into your feet when you feel like you're kind of losing your balance. Press down into your feet so you feel your feet going right into the ground like they've got roots underneath growing into the ground. Oh, all right, have a stand. Whew. All right, now black rhinos are an endangered oh. species. So there's a, oh, you've seen pictures, that. huh? I've heard of them being extinct. One of the biggest reasons is they're um, 
their horns. They yeah, have, what yeah, happens? They want their they, horns. Uh, they kill them. them for their horns. They, they take their horns. That's right. They hunt them for their horns. So let's do this pose. This is again a balance pose. <laughs> so how we were starting with airplanes. So just come. Your leg can be low. You know, it doesn't have to be high in the back. See if you can find some balance. <laughs> See if you can bring your hands like this. Right. Use your core. Then can you bring them up here <laughs> like a rhino horn? <laughs> This is hard. <laughs> Let's try to get on the other side. All right. Notice if there's a difference. Sometimes there is. You can also leave your foot down if it's too, you know, you know. But falling is part of yoga. Yeah. It's also part of life. That's yeah. how we learn things, right? How else can you learn if you don't try and mess up a little bit? It's fun, too. Yeah. All right. So when you can, however you can, bring your hands here. Press your hands together too, that can actually help with your balance and your core. And then see, you can make, <laughs> find your breath too, right? Oh my gosh, Miss Elizabeth wants us to do this, to breathe, do this. But your breath is everything, so keep breathing. Breathe in, breathe out. Wow, <laughs> okay. <Whew>. Oh, <laughs> are you with us? <laughs> Did you fall off your airplane? All right, hands up. All right, here's a fun one. It's surprising. Chimpanzees. Oh. So chimpanzees are. I'm so sad. I love chimpanzees. I know. I do too. Um, they are actually already extinct in certain parts of Africa. Oh. They're not extinct totally, but in certain parts of Africa, they don't live there anymore. So, let's think about. Um, let's see. Chimpanzee pose. All right. Again, we're doing lots of balance today, right? So, why do you think we're doing balance poses today when we're in Africa? To strengthen our muscles. Yes, to strengthen <laughs> your muscles, right? And with also the idea that maybe we can balance things in our in our earth and maybe that will help everything survive better, including humans, right? If, yeah. we, if we balance out how we live, right, we can help. So let's see. <laughs> All right, so see if you can just start here. <laughs> We're going to do... Well, we're calling this what chimpanzee pose, but it's some people call it dancer, but my chimpanzees like to do this too. I think. <laughs> Actually I've never seen that. Maybe but I'm sure they do it somewhere. Maybe dancer chimpanzees. Dancer <laughs> chimpanzees, right? Whoa. So find this and then just see how far you might be able to come. Maybe not far, it's fine. You can <laughs> oh, I don't know how balanced they have today. <laughs> So you're pressing your foot back into your hand while you're pulling your hand forward. So there's some tension there and it kind of can help you. Let's try the other side. Anyway, just doing this feels good to stretch your, your yeah. quad muscle. <laughs> I actually do this all the time. Do you? When I was in, um, when I was in school today, mm -hmm. we, there's a scientist named Jane Goodall. Yes. And she went to Africa to study chimpanzees. And, well, not study them, but like, I don't know, like, meet them or something like that. She did study them, and she did also, she lived among them. Mm -hmm. And she actually, they became very good, she became very good friends with yeah. them. And specifically one of them, she named him David Greybeard. Um, and then after she, he trusted her, all of them started coming up with her. And, and David Greybeard was probably one of the older? Yeah, he was like, um, probably like, like the leader, kind of like uh -huh. that. Um, and every time she would go back, she would, he would always recognize her, but she had to stop going back because she would go around talking about why they should save chimpanzees. So there you go, right? So there's one person doing something to help. And it's also very interesting that she got the older um, chimpanzee to trust her, mm -hmm. and it was the trust that enabled the rest of the chimpanzees to, you know, Go, gather around and be just be themselves with her and so she got to learn so that's a good thing about learn a good lesson about um, how we can be with each other that trust is super important right it can make a lot of change and you, how do you develop trust <laughs> you, uh, well if they be like rude to you you can't like trust them but if they're like always nice to you and like like polite to you and stuff, uh, you you can probably trust them. Yeah, trust is like a pattern of behavior over time, yeah. right? And by showing 
that you're kind and that you really care for them, that can gain lots of good trust. That's <laughs> absolutely, that's fantastic. That's very true. Excellent, excellent. Let's take a big breath. Breathe in and breathe out. Fold down because we're going to come down to our knees. And there's two more animals we're going to see. This one's called the riverine rabbit. Oh. So, yeah, have you heard of that? Yeah. No. Very adorable. Oh. Um, so come on your hands and knees, but you're gonna come down so that your forehead, you can either do your forehead on the on the ground or you can do the very crown of your head, but my hair is in the way, so I'm just gonna do my forehead. You come down like this and make sure your head is comfortable and then put your hands behind your back if you can and clasp your fingers together. And if you can lift your arms up, you end up looking a bit like a rabbit, like your arms are the rabbit ears, right? And find your breath. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. And bring your hands down. And press yourself back up to hands and knees. And the last adorable little animal we're going to see is called Pickergill's Frog. Oh. And do you know that? Yeah. It's teeny tiny. It's less than an inch big. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's less than an inch big. So we're going to come forward on your, um, almost like sphinx pose, you're going to come on your forearms. And you can do either a full frog or a half frog. So you know what frog's legs look like? Yeah, right? Like yeah. this, right? Their legs come out. So maybe do I'm half. Like this. <laughs> you can do it like that. Or you can just bring one of your knees up, like that. Do you see my knee over here? Yeah. I'll show you on the side. Wait. <laughs> like this. Yeah. Going right Some, right and now. you can do both, or you can come up higher. I need to come up higher if I'm going to do both. You can do both like this. So nope, either way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes you have to try to see. So laying, so one at a time is, is fantastic. And you're going to just, it, just breathe. Breathe in. Breathe out. Nice breath. Breathe in. Breathe out. So we'll breathe in that intention. Sorry, breathe in the intention. No. <laughs> you guys tell me. It wasn't that. It was breathe in gratitude, right? It doesn't matter. Breathe in gratitude. That these animals still exist. And then breathing out. The intention that they survive. you can. <laughs> Bring your legs back. Right. Come sit on your heels. I'm going to take a big breath in, arms up, and down. Two more. Breathe in. And down. Last one. Breathe in. And down. Magic Matt heads home. Let's read a story, a true story, about one woman who changed all of Kenya by planting seedlings. The story is called Wangari's Trees of Peace, and it's written by Jeanette Winter. The earth was naked. For me, the mission was to try to cover it with green. Wangari Matai. Wangari lives under an umbrella of green trees in the shadow of Mount Kenya in Africa. She watches the birds in the forest where she and her mother go to gather firewood for cooking. And she helps harvest the sweet potatoes, sugar cane, and maize from the rich soil. Wangari shines in school, and when she grows tall like the trees in the forest, she wins a scholarship to study in America. Six years later, her studies over, Wangari returns to her Kenya home and sees a change. What has happened, she wonders. Where are the trees? Wangari sees women bent from hauling firewood miles and miles from home. She sees barren land where no crops grow. And where are the birds? Thousands of trees have been cut down to make room for buildings, but no one planted new trees to take their place. Will all of Kenya become a desert, she wonders, as her tears fall. 
Wangari thinks about the barren land. I can begin to replace some of the lost trees here in my own backyard, one tree at a time. She starts by planting nine seedlings. Watching the seedlings take root gives Wangari the idea to plant more, to start a farm for baby trees, a nursery. In an open space, she plants row after row of tiny trees. Next, Wangari convinces the village women that planting trees is a good thing. She gives each one a seedling. Our lives will be better when we have trees again, you'll see. We are planting the seeds of hope. The women spread out over their village, planting tiny trees in long rows, like a green belt stretching over the land. The government men laugh. Women can't do this, they say. It takes trained foresters to plant trees. The women ignore the laughter and keep planting. Wangari pays them a small amount for each seedling still living after three months, their first earnings ever. Word travels like wind rustling through leaves about the green returning to Wangari's village. Soon other women in other villages and towns and cities in Kenya are planting long rows of seedlings too. But the cutting continues. Wangari stands tall as an oak to protect the old trees still remaining. We need a park more than we need an office tower. The government men disagree. Wangari blocks their way, so they hit her with clubs. They call her a troublemaker and put her in jail. And still she stands tall. Right is right, even if you're alone. But Wangari is not alone. Talk of the trees spreads all over Africa, like ripples in Lake Victoria. More women hear the talk and plant even more seedlings in longer and longer rows. The seedlings take root and grow tall until there are over 30 million trees where there were none. The umbrella of green in Kenya returns. Women walk tall, their backs straight, for now they can gather firewood closer to home. The land is no longer barren. Sweet potatoes, sugar cane, and maize grow again in the rich red earth. The whole world hears of Wangari's trees and of her army of women who planted them. And if you were to climb to the very top of Mount Kenya today, you would see the millions of trees growing below you and the green Wangari brought back to Africa. Wasn't that a wonderful story? And it's a true story. One person really can make a difference. I'm wondering if you have ideas about what you can do every day to help improve the world. Here's a few I have. You can turn off the water while you brush your teeth to save water. If you see lights on in a room and no one's there, you can turn off the lights. And you can also ask an adult to unplug their electrical cords that charge their phones and their computers when they're not using them. Just like Wangari, you can do something every day to make a difference. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Miss Elizabeth. We'll see you again next time on Magic Mat. Bye. Make a zebra. You can turn off, you can turn off the water while you brush. <laughs>